questions. Questions orales. The honourable member for Foothills. The Prime Minister likes to say that he takes foreign interference in our elections seriously, but in fact, he's embraced it. This started with a $200,000 donation to the Trudeau Foundation, and it has ballooned into a large clandestine transfer of funds from the dictatorship in Beijing to influence Canadian elections. The Prime Minister has known about Beijing's influence in two federal elections in Canada, and he's done nothing about it. Will the Prime Minister please explain why he has allowed Beijing's influence into Canadian elections to escalate? The Honourable Prime Minister, Secretary to the Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs, Infrastructure and Communities. Madam Speaker, just because the Conservatives continue to repeat this narrative doesn't actually make it true. We have taken the issue of foreign interference incredibly seriously since we formed government. In fact, foreign interference was raised when the leader of the opposition was the minister responsible. But what did they do, Madam Speaker? Absolutely nothing. That's why when we came into office, we made sure that our democratic institutions were built strong and robust to protect Canadians from the foreign interference Threat. I was hoping that we would start properly. I just want to remind members that when somebody else has the floor, that others shouldn't be speaking uh, during that time. The Honourable Member for Foothills. Well, here's the fact. According to Global News, Canadian security officials gave officials in the Prime Minister's office a classified and urgent briefing weeks before the 2019 election. This briefing was a stark warning to the Liberals that one of their candidates was compromised and allegedly part of Beijing's uh, influence network. The Prime Minister did nothing. In fact, this candidate was still allowed to run, despite those stark warnings. Can the Prime Minister say who that candidate was, and is he a member of his current cabinet or caucus? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, I've outlined numerous occasions all of the measures that we have continued to take to address the issues of foreign interference. But let me introduce a fact to that Honourable Member. It was just this week that the Leader of the Opposition said, quote, of course the previous Conservative government did nothing about foreign interference because it was not to its partisan advantage to do anything about it. Madam Speaker, those, the fact that the Conservative leader is actually admitting to the fact that this is nothing more than a partisan issue for them, we reject that premise and we are going to protect our democratic institutions for all Canadians. Once again, uh, there are individuals who are speaking who shouldn't be speaking because I didn't recognize them. I'm sure that they would want to hear the answer because we know that there's going to be a follow-up question. The Honourable Member for Foothills. 2019, Canadian security officials gave a briefing to the Prime Minister's office that a Liberal candidate was implicated in Beijing's foreign interference network, and yet the Prime Minister turned a blind eye to potential interference in the federal election. And even yesterday, Canadian security officials said everyone plays a key role in protecting Canada's democracy from foreign interference, including the Prime Minister. So will the Prime Minister unveil who in his office was briefed about a compromised Liberal candidate, and will he unmuzzle his Chief of Staff and let her testify at the committee? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, I'm really glad the member opposite raised the fact that everyone has a responsibility to deal with foreign interference. I want to ask that the Leader of the Opposition actually unmuzzle himself and talk about the fact that he has his own caucus members involved and meeting with far-right organizations that CSIS has warned that domestic uh, foreign interference in our elections is a very real threat. Will the members opposite, will the opposition leader become unmuzzled and actually to condemn his front bench today? The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Haute saint charles Madam Speaker, the Prime Minister is trying to sweep the foreign meddling scandal under the rug, but every day a new revelation disrupts his plans. Yesterday we learned that the communist regime in Beijing has spread its web to Quebec and that two police stations under Beijing's control are operating. The Prime Minister wants to keep everything secret, but even the RCMP is appealing to the public for help getting information. Instead of hiding the information, why doesn't the Prime Minister ask the public to help the RCMP? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. 
allegations of foreign interference or intimidation in Canada very seriously, and that's why the RCMP is investigating. We use all tools at our disposal to address interference and protect Canadians, including investigations and charges by law enforcement, diplomatic levers like withholding visas, and examining new tools like a foreign influence transparency registry. Everyone should feel safe in this country, Madam Speaker, and we will exhaust all efforts to protect them from unacceptable behaviour by hostile authoritarian states. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Haute Saint Charles. Madam Speaker, what the government has done isn't working because there's foreign meddling all across the country. The minister announced this morning that they're going to consult to see what should be done. Three months ago, we said the same thing. In the U.S., they've had an Austra uh, a registry since 1938, and in Australia, they have a foreign agent's uh, registry, and there was a re recommendation last year that this should be done here. Why is the Minister of Public Safety announcing that there, he's going to consult even further before doing something? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Speaker, and I was pleased to be at the announcement today when the Minister of Public Safety announced that we would launch consultations on a creation of a foreign Canadian Foreign Influence Transparency Registry. Madam Speaker, this is only one tool that we are using in order to combat foreign interference, foreign interference that is meant to create chaos in this country. But we want to make sure we get it right. We're going to be <clears throat> consulting with Canadians from across the country, which will close on May the 9th. I encourage Canadians to take part. When it comes to hostile states, we will always we will always move with our eyes wide open. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for St. Jean. Madam Speaker, the federal government has just announced $82 million in cuts to health care, 50 percent of which will be in Quebec. The minister is making us lose $41 million that could be used in our health care system. Has the minister visited a hospital lately or read a newspaper or turned on his TV. There's a crisis everywhere in our health care centers. We're having a hard time giving people proper care. Who in this House is so heartless as to think that this is the right time to cut health transfers? The Honourable Health Minister. I'd like to thank my colleague for giving me this opportunity to speak to this issue, Madam Speaker. Health care is a concern for all health ministers across the country, including myself. We all have a role to play. We have the same responsibility toward the same people with the same funding. And that's why we want to ensure that everyone has access to appropriate care within our jurisdiction. And that's why in Quebec, like all across the country, we'll continue to work together in the years to come. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for St. Jean. Madam Speaker, the minister in the media said that this was an opportunity and good news for Quebecers. There's no one here who's in favor of extra billing. But let's remember that Quebec needed $6 billion in new investments just to start fixing our health care system. The federal government gave $1 billion, which is one-sixth of what was needed. And today they're announcing another $41 million in cuts. I repeat, who in this House is so heartless as to think that now is the time to cut health care and that that's good news? The Honourable Minister of Health. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We're all happy to hear that my colleague agrees that extra billing is not part of our health care system, including in Quebec. And the good news is that these reductions will rapidly be refunded to Quebecers. Uh, if in Quebec and elsewhere in the country, there's an effort to crack down on extra billing and that people are given treatment based on their medical needs. Thank you. Madam Speaker, Joe Biden has just announced that he's going to eliminate $31 billion in subsidies and special tax treatments for the big polluters. Yet Canada continues to give out billions of dollars every year to profitable oil and gas companies. And Big Oil is watching this coming budget for more giveaways, handouts and subsidies for things like carbon capture. These companies are making record profits. They're giving out huge payouts to shareholders, massive bonus to their CEOs, while gouging Canadians at the pumps. Why won't the Liberals just show, show some courage and commit in the upcoming budget to eliminate the billions of dollars in tax breaks for big oil? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. 
Well, Madam Speaker, I agree with the Honourable Member that we need to go further and faster on emissions reductions, and that's why, Madam Speaker, we're capping uh, emissions from the oil and gas uh, sector, we're implementing a clean fuel sta standard, and yes, Madam Speaker, we are investing in carbon capture and storage, and we're going to be exporting that technology around the world. We're also phasing out inefficient fossil fuel subsidies. Uh, Madam Speaker, we've phased out uh, eight, and we're on our way to phasing out the rest by the end of the year. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I remember for Winnipeg Centre. Madam Speaker, the Abortion Rights Coalition of Canada and the BC Humanist Association found that the majority of crisis pregnancy centres post harmful misinformation. These centres present themselves as medical clinics but pe feature false information about abortion, contraception and sexual activity. The Liberals promised to revoke charitable status from anti-choice organisations. Two years later, they still haven't done it. Today on Abortion Provider Appreciation Day, will the minister finally remove the charitable status from organizations that mislead and shame women? Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Arrow Minister of Health. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Having access to safe and accessible abortion services across Canada is not only a right, but it's also a priority for this government. That's why we've been working with provinces and territories to make sure that this would be true across Canada, including in provinces where access is more problematic and where fees are sometimes imposed to have access to these safe and accessible abortion services in this particular country. The Honourable Member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Madam Speaker, we've seen the reports in Global News and the Globe and Mail about the coordinated campaign by the communist dictatorship in Beijing to influence our elections, and they're doing that with money and resources to try to get preferred outcomes for parties who are and candidates who are sympathetic to them. We know that our security services briefed the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, Katie Telford, and now we have the Procedure and House Affairs Committee, who's been filibustered for three days as part of the Liberal cover-up to prevent her from coming. Will the Prime Minister announce today that he will allow his Chief of Staff to testify and tell Canadians what she knew? The Honourable Prime Minister, Secretary to the Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs, Infrastructure and Communities. Madam Speaker, I'm glad the member opposite raised the issues that are happening at PROC. PROC is doing incredible work to try and do the work of Canadians. Members opposite can laugh, and it's no surprise, Madam Speaker, that when we actually had ministers there again to answer questions for Canadians, all the Conservatives could do was take misogynistic cracks and digs at them, suggesting that a female minister couldn't possibly uh, do the job uh, in dealing with foreign interference. Madam Speaker, we're focused at PROC on doing the hard work and asking the questions of Canadians while they continue to spread their massage. The Honourable Member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. We're looking for answers for Canadians That's and right. the Liberals are engaged in a multi-day cover-up filibuster. Right. Our ask is very simple. The most senior person working for the Prime Minister, his Chief of Staff, Katie Telford was briefed by CSIS about the interference attempts by the communist regime in Beijing to interfere and to, to change the outcomes of our elections. We want the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff to testify at committee, and we want to know when she's going to testify. Otherwise, we need to know what are they trying to hide. The Honourable Prime Minister Secretary. Coming from the Conservatives, who once again we have heard time and time again that the issues of foreign interference is not new. In fact, it was raised when the leader of the opposition was the member, was the minister responsible. But in fact, he actually said that they weren't going to do anything in regards to dealing with foreign interference because he felt it wasn't in their partisan interest. While we continue to bring public servants, uh, ministers, members of our national security community to the committee because we want to ensure that we are strengthening our democratic institutions while Conservatives play part. Federal member for Calgary, Shepherd. They're stalling for time. The intelligence agencies briefed the Prime Minister's staff about direct election interference. They know the information the Parliamentary Committee needs to do its work. They're offering word salad and alphabet soup of agencies and organizations to hide behind. Will they stop blocking the work of Parliament and get the Chief of Staff to testify immediately. Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. 
contrary, we continue to do the work of Parliament by adding additional meetings to PROC so that we can continue to have as many meetings as possible. Madam Speaker, we are working even when we are on constituency weeks because we find this issue so important. Our members are willing to be there to bring ministers back again. We brought public servants back again. We brought the national security community back because we want to ensure that Canadians are getting the answers. But, Madam Speaker, Conservatives continue to play partisan games. We're not going to let that get in the way of the very real work we have to do to strengthen our institutions. Member for Calgary, Shepherd. They're stalling for time. They're not allowing the committee to get to a vote to call the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff to testify. They're stalling for time by announcing a special rapporteur to take even more time to do the one thing that we need, which is a national public inquiry. They're stalling for time because now they're directing to ENSICOP, where it will hear secret hearings, secret evidence, secret conclusions, and every single MP on that committee can be vetoed by the Prime Minister. Wow. It's very, very simple. They are stalling for time, and only a national public inquiry will stop it. Will they call one? Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I will remind this House that Canadians and Canadians alone determined the outcome of the 2019 and the 2021 elections. We will use every tool available to us, unlike the Harper Conservative government who did nothing to create an oversight committee of parliamentarians. It was one of the first acts that we did as a government. The, the National Security ENSICOP is a committee of parliamentarians that provides oversight. The UK has had one since 1994. We were late to the game, but we did it when we formed government, unlike the opposition. The Honourable Member for Mégantic-Lérable. Madam Speaker, the Prime Minister was informed three times before the 2019 elections that a Liberal candidate had been targeted for its, uh, their links to the Beijing regime. The Prime Minister didn't deny that. The Prime Minister and his Chief of Staff attended briefings about those allegations and that intelligence that was provided by CSIS. We're rightly asking to hear from the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff at committee so that she can tell us what she knows about those briefings, Madam Speaker. Will the Prime Minister allow Katie Telford to appear? The Government House Leader. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. You know, interesting enough, foreign interference into elections is not something that's new. In fact, Madam Speaker, if you look into it, you'll see that there were reports to the former Prime Minister, Stephen Harper. And unbelievable what you recognize that the leader of today's Conservative Party was the minister responsible. And what did the minister responsible, the current leader of the Conservative Party, do? Absolutely nothing. Madam Speaker, we have been very aggressive on this file, and we will ensure the integrity of democracy here in Canada. The Honourable Member for Mégantic-Lérable. Let's talk about what's happening nowadays, Madam Speaker. The Prime Minister learned that a member of his caucus had been involved in Beijing's meddling and was informed about that. The Prime Minister did not deny that and did not deny that his party received illegal funds from Beijing. Now we understand why he called on his members on the Procedure and House Affairs Committee not to allow Katie Telford to appear. They're afraid that she'll come and tell the truth under oath, Madam Speaker. Why does he continue to refuse to allow Katie Telford to appear before a public parliamentary committee? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Again, Madam Madam Speaker, what we have seen is a litany of questions. You know, Wednesday there was like 20-some questions from the leader of the official opposition. And what I would really want the Conservative Party to recognize, that as I indicated, it is not a new issue. And when the Conservatives had the opportunity to actually deal with the issue, they intentionally chose to do nothing. Madam Speaker, since 2015, whether it's this Prime Minister or the Ministers responsible, we have taken tangible actions. We will continue to do so because it's protecting the integrity of our democracy. All of us believe in it. It's an apolitical. So, uh, time is up uh, for that question, but I do want to remind members that they've had an opportunity to ask questions. They can't be asking more questions or making comments while the answer is being given to them. So, I would hope that they would want to listen to it so that they can do follow up uh, questions thereafter. Uh, questions, et uh, excuse. Um, C'est ça. Questions et commentaires. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for 
Pierre Boucher, Les Patriotes Verchères. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The federal government promised Quebec billions for infrastructure. They signed a deal, $7.5 billion, and gave Quebec until 2025 to submit projects. But since then, the federal government tore up the agreement and unilaterally switched the deadline to March 31st, 2023. That's so soon. It can be counted in sleeps. It's 21 sleeps from now. And if Quebec City doesn't meet that deadline, almost $3 billion that should go to our cities will stay in federal coffers. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. I don't share and we don't share the pessimism of that bloc member. In fact, we are working with the Quebec government now to ensure that infrastructure, the infrastructure dollars that are allocated to the province are actually being spent. But Madam Speaker, our goal is to ensure that infrastructure dollars allocated for the province of Quebec are not line items on a budget somewhere. We want to see shovels in the ground, projects being built, and jobs being created. And that's why we're working with our counterparts to do just that. The Honourable Member for Pierre Boucher, Les Patriotes Verchères. Madam Speaker, ultimately, those projects will not occur if the funding doesn't flow. So if they want these projects to take place, give us the money. This is going to happen very soon, that $3 billion will be lost. And the Union of Municipalities is very concerned about this. And they want the Liberals to wake up. What are the Liberals going to say to their mayors, the Liberal Quebec Liberals, if projects uh, fall by the wayside because the federal government is taking back $3 billion and reneging on the deal? that good quality infrastructure projects are built in the province of Quebec. The minister is working aggressively with his counterpart to identify those projects. We need the Quebec government to put forward those projects so that we can release the money. We want to see the jobs, the infrastructure going exactly where this funding is desired, which is in Quebec, and we are going to keep working with our counterparts until all of that money is allocated. The Honourable Member for Caribou, Prince George. Prime Minister and his front bench have misled Canadians about what they knew and when they knew it. We know the Trudeau Foundation took money from the Communist Party of China. We know Beijing Communist operatives were directly funding Liberal nomination and elections. The facts are indisputable, yet they continue to try and sweep the scandal under the rug to cover up their own interests. When will they stop misleading Canadians and call for a public inquiry? The Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, I couldn't be further from the truth, but let me reiterate that we trust our public servants. We trust the national security community. And you know what the national security community said? That it was Canadians and Canadians alone who determined the outcome of our elections. So, Madam Speaker, while the Conservatives have already identified that they see this as a partisan issue, we don't. We are working incredibly hard to support our national security uh, community to ensure that our institutions are robust and that it's only Canadians who determine the outcome of our elections. The Honour Member Caribou Prince George. Madam Speaker, the national security community told them and briefed the, the Katie Telford and the Prime Minister weeks before the election about foreign interference. 48 hours before the nomination deadline, CSIS urged them to rescind the nomination of a Liberal candidate. Foreign operatives funded their candidates and the Prime Minister did nothing. The Prime Minister and his bench continue the cover-up. In law, you can't stand in judgment of yourself. Yet, that's exactly what this Prime Minister wants to do to cover up his own scandal. When will the public or the Prime Minister call for a public inquiry? The Prime Minister Secretary. It talked about this issue again because I find it a bit rich. The Conservatives seem to be talking out of both sides of their mouths now. The Leader of the Opposition can allow his MPs to cozy up to far-right members of foreign governments. They support the convoy, which we know involved foreign funding, and then they grandstand about the impacts of foreign interference without actually condemning it amongst their own benches. Madam Speaker, if you care, if members care about Canadian democracy, they should call it out in their own benches. The Honourable Member for Kelowna Lake Country. Well, Madam Speaker, with many leaked reports on ways Beijing has interfered in our democracy, our politics and our government, the Prime Minister first denied 
then deflected, then he decided to turn towards a committee. A committee that is completely behind closed doors, with secret meetings, secret witnesses, secret testimony and secret conclusions. A committee with no openness or transparency. Why are the Liberals hiding the truth from Canadians? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I am extremely upset about the way that the National Ensicop is, is portrayed by the opposition. It was created by an act of Parliament. It was debated at committee. It was passed in this House. It has members from all parties that are part of it. They are they are privy to top secret information, which keeps our country safe. That's why they are not allowed to divulge it. But to portray it as a secret committee is wrong. It's misleading Canadians. It was created by Parliament, and I'm very proud of the work that it does. For Colonial Lake Country. This committee is not independent. It reports to the Prime Minister. There are serious interference allegations. There's the $200,000 donation from Beijing influences to the Trudeau Foundation, and what the Globe and Mail called an orchestrated machine of Beijing's influence to elect Liberals and defeat Conservatives. Nothing is covered that won't eventually be revealed. So will the Prime Minister do the honourable thing and call for a public inquiry? Oh, Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, the committee is independent. In fact, two members of the official opposition sit on that committee, as well as members of the Senate and other opposition parties. And while the report is given to the Prime Minister, I would remind honourable members that it is also tabled with the um, National... Uh, Public Safety Committee annually. We review it, and in fact, the legislation says that if the Prime Minister asks for any changes to that report, it has to be reported to the to Parliament. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I remember for London Panshaw. Far-right ministers in Israel are celebrating horrifying attacks on Palestinian civilians, engaging in dehumanization, threatening democratic institutions, and calling for violations of international law. And thousands of Israelis are on the ground right now, protesting the actions and rhetoric of their government. Here, JSpace Canada is asking the government to take a firm stance against these comments and actions. It's not enough to merely condemn his remarks. The government must listen to this group. Will this government ensure that no Canadian officials legitimize extremists like Smotrich or Ben Gavir by meeting with them? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, we are appalled by the reprehensible comments made by Minister Smutrich. We unequivocally condemn these remarks. We stand firmly against all incitements to violence and condemn all acts of violence and terrorism. Those responsible must be held accountable and measures must be applied equally and consistently. We call on Israeli officials to denounce these comments. We call for an immediate de-escalation of tensions to restore calm. Our thoughts are with all those affected by the recent violence. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honourable Member for South Okanagan, West Kootenai. Madam Speaker, in April, Canadians will see the biggest tax increase in 40 years on beer, wine and spirits. And last week, I spoke with Jorg and Annette Engel, constituents who own a small distillery, who are worried about what this tax means for their livelihood. We're in an affordability crisis, and a tax hike this large will make things worse. The Liberals' escalator tax on beer, wine and spirits is going to cost small business owners tens of thousands of dollars. So will the Liberals fix this tax, stop this tax hike to help Canadians already feeling the squeeze? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, our government supports small craft brewers from right across the country. All of, well, most of us probably have small craft brewers that are in our ridings. That's why we have decreased taxes on small business, not once, but twice, including reducing the re rate of tax for small business from 11% to 9%. Last year's escalator equated to about one penny for every five cans of beer sold. We'll continue to work with the brewers and the craft, uh, in the craft brewing sector to make sure that they're supported and that their business continues to grow. The honor, honorable member for Thunder Bay, Rainy River. Madam Speaker, Indigenous people in Canada often face challenges in accessing health care, particularly finding a doctor or nurse in rural and remote areas. In addition, First Nation, Inuit and Métis people, like all Canadians, ought to be able to receive health care without encountering prejudice or racism. Can the Minister of Indigenous Services Canada update this House 
on what our government is doing in partnership with Indigenous communities to improve their health care. General Ma uh, Minister of Indigenous Services. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and I thank the member from Thunder Bay, Rainy River, for this really important question. I have heard, and I'm certain that he has seen in his practice over many years, the experiences that Indigenous people have in our health care systems every single day that are rife with racism and systemic discrimination. And that's why I'm so pleased that the Prime Minister announced a $2 billion Indigenous Health Equity Fund that will help to end the systemic discrimination that members of our communities all across the countries are facing, like Joy Seshaquan. I want to thank um, the Prime Minister for this inclusion, and I want to thank the member for his work in this space. Thank you. Honourable Member for Kamloops, Thompson Caribou. Madam Speaker, in July 2020, Katie Telford, Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, testified before a Commons Committee on the WE Charity Scandal. In May 2021, she testified before a Commons Committee on sexual misconduct. And now this Liberal government is preventing her from again testifying under oath before a Commons Committee. When will this Liberal government end its filibuster and allow the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff to testify on Beijing's foreign interference? Honourable Prime Minister, Secretary to the Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs, Infrastructures and Communities. Madam Speaker, as I've said before, the work that PROC is doing on this file is, in fact, we have recalled witnesses, ministers, uh, public servants, members of the national security community, all to talk about this very important issue because we take it so seriously. But, Madam Speaker, it's already been confirmed in this House that the Leader of the Opposition sees this as nothing more than a partisan issue. While well, we are focused on ensuring that our institutions are strong, Conservatives continue to play games that committee and take political cheap shots instead of doing the work that Canadians sent them here to do. Remember for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. The Chief of Staff is the nexus for sensitive communications in the Prime Minister's office. She came to Finance Committee to testify on the Prime Minister's uh, scandal into the uh, uh, WE charity. And she came to defense on the former General Vance's sexual misconduct because the Prime Minister wouldn't. Even if she missed the CSIS briefing on the Beijing interference into the election scandals, she would have been advised by the National Security Advisor. Will, she, will the Liberals end the filibuster and allow her to come to committee? The Honourable Prime Minister, Secretary of the Government, House Leader. Madam Speaker, what is very clear is that we've had professional civil servants, apolitical professional civil servants, that have made it very clear to all Canadians that the outcome of the 2019 and 2020 elections were not influenced in any way from international interference. And in fact, Madam Speaker, if you take a look in terms of what we have done in contrast to what the Conservatives have done, you will find that the Conservative government failed in its responsibilities while we continue to live up to ours. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Provence. Madam Speaker, the cold winds of election interference have been blowing in Canada, and the Prime Minister has been caught up in their wintry blast. The Greek storyteller Aesop tells about a contest between the wind and the sun. Who was stronger? Who could remove the traveler's cloak? In the end, the sun won and was able to expose the traveler. The Prime Minister needs to open the shutters and allow the sun to remove the cloak of secrecy and expose the truth of Beijing election interference. Will the Liberals end their filibuster and let the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff testify on Beijing election interference? Yeah, yeah. Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. to talk about as well on this issue. Let me quote the Leader of the Opposition this week. Quote, of course the previous Conservative government did nothing about foreign interference because it was not to its partisan advantage to do anything about it. End quote. Madam Speaker, while the Conservatives have clearly demonstrated that they want to play games and not take this seriously, we feel that th their actions are reckless when it comes to national security and that's why we are going to do the serious work at committee and in the House to ensure our institutions are strengthened. L'honorable député de Montmagny désire Camorasca, Rivière du Loup. Madame la Présidente. When it's an issue of interference in Canadian elections, the Prime Minister's confidence seems rather selective. He says he trusts parliamentarians who sit on the secret special committee that will produce a secret report.
But when it comes to letting his chief of staff, Katie Telford, testify before a public parliamentary committee, he flatly refuses. Why does this prime minister agree to one and not the other? Why will he not let Katie Telford, his chief of staff, testify? Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I would remind this House again that the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians is not a secret committee. I would also provide this House with a list of some of the things we've done. We appointed an independent panel to review the 2019 and 2021 elections, and they found that those, both those elections were free and fair. The Prime Minister announced that he's going to appoint an independent export, expert as special rapporteur to review the elections to see if there were any gaps that we need to fix. Today, we announced that we would have a foreign influence registry. Madame Speaker, we Madam Speaker, on March 1st, Papier Excellence acquired Resolute Forest Products, a forest industry giant that controls 25 percent of Quebec's forests. If a buyer can revitalize Resolute, which was investing very little in modernizing its mills, that would be great. However, an investigation by an international media consortium, including Radio-Canada, is causing concern. Papier Excellence is linked to Asian Pulp and Paper, a company with dubious practices and controlled by the Chinese state. Has the government done the required checks to make sure the Chinese state does not indirectly control a quarter of Quebec's forests? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, the member opposite knows full well that all foreign investments are reviewed under the Investment Canada Act, and this transaction is no different. The, uh, the co in the case of Paper Excellence's takeover of Resolute, it was subject to a national security re review process. And not only that, the member will be pleased to know that as part of that review process, the investor is committed uh, to providing uh, commitments such as maintaining existing Canadian patents, maintaining facilities in Quebec, and oh. adhering to Canadian employment and environmental laws. Now, due to the confidentiality provisions of the Investment Canada Act, we cannot comment further. That's not the issue, but fine. Now, if we made better use of our forests, if we processed more, if we developed alternatives to oil, this would be a key to a prosperous and renewable carbon-free economy. But that's not Asian pulp and paper's business model. They process as little as possible, send craft pulp directly to China. Jobs are in China. The added value is in China. What conditions did the government impose on Papier Excellence to protect our processing plants and ensure that Quebec's forests generate wealth in Quebec and not in China? Secretary to the Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry. Madame la Présidente, l'acquisition de Couture. Madam Speaker, the acquisition was subject to provisions of the national security review process. Investors committed to supporting investments in facilities, maintaining Canadian patents, and respecting Canadian environmental legislation and labor legislation. I'm sorry, the time is up. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Madam Speaker, after eight years, of liberal governance, everything costs more for all Canadians, especially essential goods. For instance, housing. Someone renting housing has to pay twice as much compared to eight years ago. For people who are buying a home, mortgages doubled over the last eight years. And that is, uh, and that carries the signature of this Liberal government. They never controlled their expenditures, which led to the inflation we're experiencing now. Will the government recognize its responsibility? Will they get out of the way so that we can step in and fix what's broken? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary for the Minister of Tourism and Associate Minister of Finance. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for the question. Last month, we saw inflation go down. As for the issue of rent that Canadians are paying, Conservatives voted against a direct payment that we offered to Canadians to help them make ends meet. We are there to support Canadians. Thank you. The member for Louis Saint Laurent. 
Another question. Another aspect that's essential for Canadians is food. As a citizen for Loretteville, many of us do so. We bring food to the shared fridge on Racine Street. And I can tell you, it goes fast because people need it. I'm sure it's happening in the riding of the parliamentary secretary. People who gave to food banks now have to knock on their doors. Is the government aware of the problems that inflation is causing, that its government caused by refusing to curb any of its expenditures for eight years? The Honorable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, my colleague knows full well that inflation right now affects every country throughout the world because of the war in Ukraine, because of supply chain issues and others. I volunteer at my local community kitchen, and I, as well as every member of my party, see what's happening on the ground. That's why we have a plan to help Canadians with the issue of affordability. Aldergrove. Madam Speaker, after eight years of this uh, Liberal Prime Minister, his housing record spells double trouble. Average uh, rent costs have doubled to $2,200 a month. Average mortgage costs have more than doubled to $3,500 a month. Oh. After eight years of this Liberal Prime Minister, many Canadians are worried about keeping a roof over their heads. So here's my question. Will the Prime Minister take responsibility for this out-of-control inflation? Or will he step aside and let us fix what he broke? The Honourable Minister of Housing and Diversity and Inclusion. Madam Speaker, uh, I want to assure the Honourable Member that we take the issue of supporting Canadians with rent very seriously. That is why we introduced the Canada Housing Benefit and recently topped up a one-time payment of $500. The fact of the matter is we've been there for Canadians and will continue to be there for Canadians. He should, uh, the Honourable Member should have a conversation with his leader. It's been a year since his leader announced that he was running for, for that position and he hasn't presented a plan to Canadians. They have no plan and they have no solutions to bring to this parliament. Madam Speaker, inflation in the food industry is very worrying. The Agriculture Committee looked into the matter and heard from various experts. They were very positive about introducing a code of conduct that could reduce pressure to raise prices for consumers. I know that yesterday the Conservatives were a bit confused on the issue. Could the Parliamentary Secretary for the Minister of Agriculture give the full story on this code and the benefits that it could offer to consumers? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for Pontiac, who works to support agriculture and rural issues that affect Canadians and Quebecers. A code of conduct is essential to ensure fair prices for consumers. It will ensure a fair relationship between processors and retailers, supermarkets. We saw at the Agriculture Committee that we're expecting the industry to set up a code of conduct before the end of the year, and that's good news for consumers. After eight years of this Liberal Prime Minister, rent and housing have doubled. The average rent for a two-bedroom apartment across Canada is over $2,000 per month, compared to 1100 in 2015. After eight years of this Liberal Prime Minister, average mortgage rates have, gone, have doubled and now cost Canadians over $3,000 per month. Will the Prime Minister finally take responsibility for driving up the cost of housing so we can fix what he broke? The Honourable Minister of Housing and of Diversity and Inclusion. Uh, Mrs. M Madam Speaker, uh, we've introduced the Canada Housing Benefit to be there for Canadian renters. We've also introduced the top-up payment of $500 that is going towards almost 2 million Canadians to support them with the cost of rent. And what did the party opposite do? Not only did they vote against that real help for Canadian renters, they played procedural games in this House to delay its implementation. I would urge the Honourable Member to have a conversation with her caucus members who believe that the federal government should actually do less on affordable housing. For Carlton Trail Eagle Creek. 
of groceries is also rising in Canada at its fastest rate since 1981. In fact, Canada's food price report for 2023 predicts that families will spend over $1,000 more on food this year. That's another 5 to 7 percent increase in food prices over last year, the largest increases since it began reporting 12 years ago. Will the Prime Minister take responsibility for his inflationary spending so we can fix what he broke? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the uh, Deputy Prime Minister and to the Minister, uh, Associate Minister of Finance. Madam Speaker, I'm happy to take this opportunity to talk about the strength of the Canadian economy in a time of global inflation. While it's true that we still have the lowest deficit in the G7, while it's true that we still have the lowest net debt to GDP ratio in the G7, we are still focusing on making life more affordable for Canadians. And I'd like to take this opportunity to correct a record from a statement I made a few weeks ago where I said Canadians working hard to come through this had created more than 600,000 jobs because as of this morning that number is 830,000 jobs. And I would also like to correct the fact that I said we're focused on affordability and getting kids dental care. It used to be uh, 150,000 kids, now it's over 200,000 oh. children, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Gaznepe, Mississippi, Churchill River. Madam Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal Prime Minister, this isn't working. These are the words of a food bank chair from northern Saskatchewan who adds, everything is increasing, gas, rent, food, heat. I just don't know how people are supposed to manage. Their monthly food budget is $5,000 and produces half the food hampers it did just three years ago. This is less than a one-night stay for the Prime Minister in a hotel. Right. Will the Prime Minister take responsibility for this crisis or get out of the way so we can fix what he broke? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, we know that global inflation is stretching the budgets of Canadians, but that's why we've put together a $12.1 billion affordability plan. That includes doubling the GST benefit. That went out to over 11 million Canadians, including more than 50% of our seniors. That includes strengthening the Canada Workers' Benefit that helped 4.1 million workers get the help that they need to put food on the table. And that helped more than 200,000 children under the age of 12 get the dental care that they deserve, taking a burden off of parents in this, in this country, Madam Speaker. Member for Whitby. Madam Speaker, the government recently launched its new and ambitious Indo-Pacific strategy. This comprehensive plan makes it clear that India, the world's fastest growing economy, is a critical partner for Canada. While Canada and India have a long-standing bilateral relationship, the strategy commits Canada to further strengthen both economic as well as people-to-people -people ties. Having just travelled to India, could the Parliamentary Secretary please tell the House about the work done so far to implement this new strategy? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, I'd like to thank the member for Whitby for his advocacy and a very important question. I had the opportunity to accompany the Minister of Foreign Affairs to the G20 in India last week. This was the Minister's second trip to India since the release of our Indo-Pacific strategy, and we are hitting the ground running. As part of my trip, I had meetings on strengthening cultural and educational ties and met with business groups like the Indo-Canadian Chamber Business Council. Our government will continue to strengthen our position in the Indo-Pacific region to unlock economic opportunities for Canadians and grow our strong people-to-people -people ties. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Edmonton, Greasebach. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. In Alberta, Indigenous communities are pushing back on mega corporations like Imperial Oil, who are polluting our land and jeopardizing our health. But the Liberals turn a blind eye, and Premier Smith rewards them with billions of dollars. Seepage of toxic water from Imperial Oil Sands facility poison Indigenous lands and waters, allowing these corporations to continue with just a slap on the wrist. Delaying justice is denying justice, Madam Speaker. When will the the Liberals take Indigenous rights seriously by closing the environmental loopholes. Yes. yes. The Honourable Minister of Indigenous Services. Mr. Speaker, it's absolutely appalling that the leak from an imperial, imperial oil was known by the Alberta government for well over six months, that neither the corporation nor the government informed Indigenous people who rely on that water and that land for life, Mr. Speaker. We have to do better, Mr. Spe Madam Speaker, and we will. This government will take Indigenous rights seriously. We will protect water, we will protect the land, and we will work together to do that. The Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Thank you, Madam Speaker. But this we know. For nine months, the Coral Mine leaked toxic effluent on the lands and waters of the Athabasca Chippewan First Nation. This we know in that time, 
Imperial continued to lobby for more subsidies from Canada while failing to inform the Chippewa and Athabascan people. Our prisons are overrepresented with Indigenous people, which means they're underrepresented with corporate criminals like the CEO of Imperial Oil. When will this government stop subsidizing big oil and get tough on corporate crime? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. And, and like the Honourable Member, our government is deeply, deeply concerned by the reports about the Curl Mine tailings ponds. Our first thoughts are for the health and well-being of families in the Athabasca Chippewa First Nation, the ACFN, uh, and other affected Indigenous communities. And, and Madam Speaker, uh, the Minister of Environment and Climate Change has reached out directly to the ACFN, the Miccosukee Cree, as well as the Alberta Environment Minister to better understand the situation from their perspectives and to, uh, Madam Speaker, ensure uh, that they know that uh, the Government of Canada is, is there with them every step of the way. And that brings us to the end of question period. I wish everybody a great week. For those who are leaving before the House rises, and a great week in the riding. Um, I have a point of is it a point of order? The Honourable Member for Longueuil, uh, Shell Lamoine. Madam Speaker, there have been discussions amongst the parties, and if you seek it, I believe you will find unanimous consent to adopt the following motion. 